Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to First Chapter Fridays, brought to you by the BPMS Library Tail Club. Teachers, please maximize the video screen for viewing, and also please post these slides in your Google Classroom so students can listen again or use the Mac and Via link to continue the story. And this week's story is Lockdown, Escape from Furnace by Alexander Gordon Smith, book one in the Escape from Furnace series. Furnace Penitentiary, the world's most secure prison for young offenders, buried a mile beneath the Earth's surface. Convicted of a murder he didn't commit, sentenced to life without parole, new fish, Alex Sawyer knows he has two choices, find a way out or resign himself to a death behind bars in the darkness at the bottom of the world. Except in Furnace, death is the least of his worries. Soon, Alex discovers that this prison is a place of pure evil, where inhuman creatures in gas masks stalk the corridors at night where giants in black suits drag screaming inmates into the shadows, where deformed beasts can be heard howling from the blood-drenched tunnels below. And behind everything is the mysterious, all-powerful warden, a man as cruel and dangerous as the devil himself, whose unthinkable acts have consequences that stretch far beyond the walls of the prison. Together with a bunch of inmates, some innocent kids who have been framed, others cold-blooded killers, Alex plans an escape. But as he starts to uncover the truth about Furnace's deeper, darker purpose, Alex's actions grow even more dangerous, and he must risk everything to expose this nightmare that's hidden from the eyes of the world. So today we're reading the book Lockdown. Lockdown Escape from the Furnace. Chapter 1. No Way Out. If I stopped running, I was dead. My lungs were on fire. My heart was pumping acid. Every muscle of my body threatened to cramp. I couldn't even see where I was going anymore. My vision was fading as my body was prepared to give in. If the sirens hadn't been hammering at my eardrums, then I would have been able to hear my breath ragging and desperate, unable to pull enough air in to keep me going. There's one more flight of stairs one more and I might be able to make it. I forced myself to run faster as the metal scare staircase rattling beneath my clumsy steps. Everywhere around me, other kids were panicking, bolting at the same way to safety. I didn't look back to see where I was I didn't look back to see where I was beneath. I didn't look back to see what I was Behind what us. was behind us? Yes, sorry. <clears throat> I didn't need to. I could picture it in my head. It domestic muzzles, silver eyes, and those teeth like razor wires. Someone grabbed my arm, pulling me back. I lost my balance, spilling over the rails. For a second, the yards appeared five stories beneath me. I almost let myself go. Better this way than be able to devour it, right? Then the beast shrieked through its wet throat, and I started running again before I even knew I was doing it. I heard the rattle of the cell doors, knew they were closing. If I was caught out here, then I was history. I leaped up the last few steps, hurtling down the narrow landing. The inmates jeered from their cells, shouting for me to die. They stuck at their arms and legs to trip me, and it almost worked. I staggered, lurched forward, falling. Somehow I made it, swinging through the doors an instant before it slammed shut, the mechanism locking tight. The creature howled a banshee's wail that made my skin crawl. I risked looking back through the bars, saw its huge bulk bounding past my cell, no skin to hide its grotesque muscles. There was a scream as I found another victim, but it didn't matter. I was safe. For now. That was close, said a voice behind me. You're getting good at this. I didn't answer, just stared out across the prison. Six stories of cells beneath me, and God only knew how many more above my head. All buried deep underground. I felt like the weight of the world was pressing down on me, like I'd been buried alive and the, the panic began to set in. 
I closed my eyes, sucking in as much of the hot, stale air as I could, trying to picture the outside world, the sun, the ocean, my family. All things I would never see again. Yup, came the voice in my, from my cellmate. Bet it's starting to feel like home already. I opened my eyes and the prison was still there. Furnace Penitentiary, the place they send you to forget about you, to punish you for your crimes, even when you didn't commit them. Only one way in and no way out. Yeah, this was my home now. It would be until I died. That wouldn't be long. Not with the gangs that eyeballed me from behind their bars. Not with the black suits, the guards who ran their shotguns along railings as they checked their cells. Not with those creatures, raw fury in their eyes and blood on their breath. And there were worse things in Ferns, much worse. Maybe tonight the blood watch would come, drag me from my cell. Maybe tonight they'd turn me into a monster. I dropped to my knees, cradling my head in my hands. There had to be a way out of here, a way to escape. I tried to find one in the hurricane of my thoughts, tried to come up with a plan but all I could think about was how I came to be here, how I went from being a normal kid to an inmate in the worst hellhole on earth, how I ended up in Furnace. Lockdown, book one in the Escape from Furnace series by Alexander Gordon Smith. Continue the story on Mac and Via.